Hello everyone, it is I, the Measy Man, and today we're going to be continuing the Anachronic series. It is a fantastic role-playing game. Man, this game is so old, but I love it because of the ideas. Like, hey, do you have a size 5 helmet? Noxguard says, is that some sort of joke? That our heads are small because we have no brains? That's funny, man. Even if I wasn't a Nox card, that wouldn't be funny. I've been issued a smaller shot helmet before and it really hurts. Anachronix is a long dead alien city planet floating inside this the shell of Cinder 1. Anachronix was theorized to once have been home to millions of quarantined aliens who slowly died of some sort of horrible plague leaving the city to fall to ruins to be taken over by the refuse of the galaxy as the center of their nefarious dealings. Anachronics means poison from the past or poison remaining from a previous time. Anachronicism plus noxious. Dr. V. Hio Ashen says the scientific community must be given access to these tunnels. How can these data characters just stake his claim on public property with a wave of his hand. Noxguard says, you just don't understand, do you? Why don't you make me understand, officer? I'd love to. As soon as this guy gets out of hearing range. <laughs> he's talking about, he's talking about my main character. Oh, he's got some of that mistech stuff. All right, so we don't understand. So far in the game, I don't know what these, these guys are saying. They look like they kind of look like frogs from the game Frogger. <laughs> this uh, artificial intelligence interface thing is, is directing traffic. That's crazy. Found you. Noxguard says, What a beautiful day. I haven't felt this glad to be alive in years. Green skies, the smell of rocket fuel in my nostrils, skin uh, crisping from jet exhaust. Every day should be this worshipful. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Noxguard says, Too bad I can't get to the Cinder Ring. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Too bad I've still got a headache from that damn helmet. Headquarters issued me a size 5 helmet this morning. It was cutting off circulation and I kept passing out. Luckily, the Nox guard I relieved from duty was nice enough to give me this replacement. I have still got the size 5 helmet in my storage pack if you want to see it. When I show the guys back at HQ, they're going to split their pants. Think I can have the helmet since you're not using it? Sorry, partner, it's not mine to give, but I'll tell you what. They give away free sandwiches and goodies to people who are down on their luck at the Salvation Surplus on Skid Row. But I really need a helmet, officer. Have pity on a poor, unemployed loser. Hey, now, I won't listen to any self-pity, buddy. You gotta change your outlook on life. Stay optimistic at all times. It could be much worse. Be thankful you're not living in poverty on a planet like Genus or lifting crates on Korea. You've got it good, mister. Life gets easier when you put things in perspective. Life gets easier, officer, when you give me that helmet. Persistent, are you? Look, that helmet isn't going to solve your problems. The Nox Guard says, life is what you make it. You can either be happy or depressed. You're like a broken record, the Nox Guard says. You want that helmet? You won't be happy until I give you the helmet. Bye. Here's the helmet. Mission accomplished. Job all done. Now go away. Ha! We persuaded him to give us the helmet without any conflict. No violence at all. That's awesome. Or I think this is where I go. I'm not sure. The uncertainty is boiling in my brain. Oh my god. Look at this alien. He has, he's like a, he's like a, the miniature version of, I think it's in Greek culture, uh, about the Cyclops. And this alien basically looks like a miniature version of like a cyclops, basically. He is just like, I guess, I guess he's like a member of the, uh, the casino here, a uh, Kisuno Knox. 
There's an alien way up there. Come and contemplate with me on my channel. We'll have great, great fun of the existence and possibilities of everything. Okay, so I can pick this? No, this is a envelope with $50 in it. It's another one of those aliens that I don't understand what they're saying. They kind of remind me of uh, the aliens in Star Wars that always talk like Oh, all right, Geezer, stop fondling the Miztech and crack a gander at the goods. Am I hired or what? That have beefed up security since the Deanimo fiasco. Getting into the tunnels might be trouble. We'll deal. Here, take this and plug it in your ear. You'll understand every language from here to the Traeger anomaly. Spiffy, where'd you pull this baby from? The Nox Guard helmet. Linguinators became standard issue two months ago. Really? How'd they communicate with the aliens before that? They beat them up. Well, where the hell do we go now? Lead the way, hot pants. Hot pants? He looks weird. Methodin Door Lord says, I am Methodin Door Lord. I cannot allow you to pass the door. Okay, fellas, I'd rather not see you infiscrated at this, just this moment. Provoking a Mephidin door lord is not the answer here. We better fish up another way into the tunnels, because this guy is not going to budge. Hey, what about this Eddie character I've heard so much about? He's becoming a real underground figure in the bricks, judging by all the Eddie knows graffiti we see sprayed everywhere. Maybe he knows an alternate entrance to the Mystic Tunnels. Worth a try, anyway. The worst that can happen is that we get a good contact for future cases, right? But where to find Eddie? Hey, what about C Conrad C C C that information specialist we met at the Fountain Overlook? He seems to know his stuff. Maybe he can point us to this Eddie character. Hell, ma he might even know how to get into the tunnels. Just a thought or two. Okay, so what's the scoop on this Eddie character? Now, now, detective, you know the deal. First, you feed me information worth my while. Well, my neighbor's cat is sick. Excuse me? Yeah, blood in his vomit and everything. Oh, that won't do, detective. Another try, please. Well, uh, there's always Doyle. Doyle Doralimus. Bouncer at Rowdy's. What about him? Rowdy's been lazy with the payroll. Doyle monkeys with the books, paying himself for extra days. He's been skimming for months. Now who's Eddie? Eddie the True. Eddie, like myself, gathers information. Although not the most reputable of callings, I realize, Eddie has elevated our lowly profession into nothing less than an art form. No fact is too small. No shred of data too insignificant. He follows each thread of information, each string of thought, juggling this raw data in his mind until a pattern emerges. Look around you. Eddie owns this place. He owns it in the most devious way possible. In his mind. Make no mistake, Detective. Eddie knows. Yeah, whatever. Where do I find this creep? <laughs> Loco Cold Wolf. Who? What? Loco Cold Wolf. A name. A man. Follow him. All paths lead back to Eddie. It was a pleasure, Detective. Likewise, Shoe Shine. What's your secret? You would be surprised how rarely. People look up. Okay, there's the place. Don't follow him from too far a distance and lose him, but don't stick too close and get caught either. I already gave that time minder a quick pet for good luck as we passed it, so we're ready to go. Don't let me down. This is what I do best, Pops. Stay off my back and I'll handle this lightly and politely. Quiet! Here he comes. When? Tuesday.
I use Eddie to acquire sensitive information. My clients pay big bucks to find out if, say, their wife's cheating on them or if their business partner's taking them for a ride, but Eddie's more discreet than a private dick, see, because he just happens to know things, you know? And the fact that I charge a personal go-between fee ain't nobody but nobody's business, so give me the briefcase back. Not until you tell us where to find Eddie, you skunk. Come on, you ain't gonna be that way. He lives in the junkyard. That stinkhole? Ask him whatever you want while you're there. It's no big deal. He's a pretty nice guy. Just make sure you take him something chewy. Chewy? Yeah, and stinky. Chewing on stuff helps him concentrate. He can be a little, um, uh, unfocused sometimes. That's good. That's real good. Okay, well, we're gonna let you walk. But you watch who you're messing with next time. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever, man. I've run in a sendinet search for the keyword stinky and chewy, and it turned up an article on a poor guy who lost half his foot in an industrial accident. This looks like the guy from the Matrix, kind of. I'm gonna take a picture. Selfie! Uh-oh, that alien and human love. Hi. Hey, can we pull you aside for a second? Hi. Hi? Hi there. Hi! Yeah, this is gonna sound funny. Peculiar, really. But we heard... Uh, through the grapevine. ...that you had an unusual... A condition. ...accident that left you... Unusual. ...with one leg. And we were wondering if... Uh, By any chance... You might give us... Loan us! Loan us, yeah. Your, uh, sock. Sock! Your sock. Warning. Warning. Transition, Transition minor on plate sections, sections 28, 28 15, 15, 31, 31 and 9, and nine. will commence we'll in 15, 15 seconds. seconds. That was so weird, but he actually gave us the sock. Transition complete. Okay, so... <laughs> Me and my space dwarf, Moop, says, Offering. Very nice, very nice. Only one may enter. Maintain distance. Make not sudden movement. Suspicious anything, and we split you from your life. Understand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be that for this video. I hope everyone is enjoying the Anochronics. Anochronics playthrough. It's quite interesting. Bye!